sound. How do you get the sound? When you hear a wonderful choir, you say to yourself, listen to that sound. Listen to those overtones that come through. Listen to those beautiful vowels, the way they are matched one to the other. Listen to that diction. How do you get that? That is the purpose of this toolkit, to talk about some strategies on how we can develop the sound within our chorus. Now, the reason that we have these people here is because we want to impress upon you that when you work with a choir, you're working with a pneumatic instrument. P-N-E-U-M-A-T-I-C. Pneumatic. Air. We are an air instrument, just like they are. The breathing mechanism keeps their sound alive. The breathing mechanism keeps our sound alive. How do we do this? Well, of course, it begins with the breath. How do you control the breath? What is the breath? How many times have you heard the phrase, breathe from the diaphragm, or support the tone from the diaphragm? Have you ever heard that sound before? <laughs> yeah, yes, it's somewhere in your life, that's right. What does it mean, breathe from the diaphragm? What does it mean to you, Matt? Uh, it means to, uh Support your sound, breathe from the stomach. Breathe from the stomach. What does it mean to you, Lisa? Uh, it means to use the diaphragmic muscle to support the breath. What does it mean to you, Suze? It means not to take little short breaths and, you know, and have it unsupported. Mm -hmm. Joan? It means to lower the breath, not to keep it up here, but to get it down here. Buddy, what does it mean to you? Fill up the whole thing, just like a baby. Now see, don't you just love, don't you love all of these things? You, because you, we hear it time and time again. In the choirs that I prepared for orchestras, for instance, the, uh, uh, Eugene Ormandy used to say, breathe from the diaphragm, and he would point to his chest. You know, this, this sort of thing, because we don't know where it is, we don't know what it does, and how it acts. How does it, what do you do, Irene? Well, I fill up with as much air as possible, um, all the way around to the back and support from the lowest muscles I can. Okay. Uh, this whole mystique of the diaphragm is something that I'd like really to address right off the bat and get it out of the way. Buddy, would you like to help me out? Let's walk on over here to the table, if you would, please. To begin with, now that Buddy is nice and comfortable here, what is the diaphragm? The diaphragm is a muscle which lies this way in your body. It lies across this way, if you can see this, like an inverted saucer. And it is roughly attached to the lower or the floating ribs. And if, when it's in its uh, normal position, is this way. When you inhale, it moves down so that the organs which have been attached up here, I mean not attached, but which are up here, like your spleen, your, your pancreas, your stomach, etc., they've been bunched here. They have no place to go when the, when the lungs expand and they push, the, uh, push open down here and widen the rib cage. The diaphragm then is extended flat or down lower and pushes these muscles so that they, the, these organs, they have no place to go. They run into the pelvic bone, and so they can't go any further. They cannot go out the back because they hit the spinal column, so the only way that they have to do is to go up. So when you inhale, you will feel, you will feel almost as though you're getting fat right in the belly button area. Ribs stay the same. One of my teachers used to say, your rib cage should be like Joan of Arc's suit of armor. It never, it never really changes. You keep these punched out. Now, let's, let's see what happens here, because this is the crucial thing so far as we're, as, as we're concerned as vocalists. This air mechanism is one that works like a bellows. As we inhale, and the stomach comes up, and as we exhale, it goes down. I, t I tell my kids, begin thin and feel fat as you inhale. Now, buddy, do this for me. Will you take, get all the air out of your body? Open your mouth. Now, gasp. <sighs> now, notice that. Notice how, how, how that happened there, and you feel a real bunching, but you didn't see anything happening here. That's the crucial point. You can't feel anything happen up here. If he were to go, <gasps> which most of us do when we, when we take a big breath, that's exactly opposite of what it should happen. Will you try that once more, buddy? Wonderful. Now get all the air out again. By the way, 
don't ever try to save air. You are not a pneumatic savings and loan association. You know, you don't save a little breath from this phrase for the next phrase or for a phrase that's coming up that's going to be long. You use every bit of it. You use every bit of it. All right, try it once more. Now hiss the air out. Now notice as he hisses the air out that this still goes down. This still goes down. It pulls way in. Now, notice also when he gets to the air supply, what happens to these muscles right here, buddy? Did you feel them tighten there? What? That's right, they tighten. They, tight, they tighten up a little bit. These are the support muscles. The support muscles, we call the groin muscles below, below the belt buckle are the support muscles. The muscles within the belt buckle area are the breathing muscles. These must be able to be flexible and to be moved in and out. These give the support. Now, I'm going to go back and take care of them, buddy, while you get off the table there, if you will. Would you lie back, ladies? Here. Here we have it. Joan and Lisa. Here we go. Now, will you take a good breath? Where my There we go. Bravo. Do you see those tummies move? Do you see those tummies go way up and down? Now, try that again. Bravo. Let Exhale. Exhale. There we go. Now. Would you do want something, or will you pant like, stick your neck out, uh, your ne not your neck out, stick your tongue out and pant like a dog. <sighs> Slow down the panting. <sighs> now, will you do one other thing for me, ladies? Would you take that breath and then sing an O vowel? Any pitch you choose. O. Now, feel that coming in? Let it come in, come on. Feel that come in, oh. Fine. As you got to the end of the uh, breath supply, what other muscles came into play, Joan? The same dead gummed groin muscles, right? Now those are the support muscles, and getting them in place as you begin singing when you're on the maximum end of the breath supply is absolutely crucial you're to, to get them in like that. Okay, up. Here we go. Here, may I help you? <laughs> there we go. So we're all so graceful here. Now, Come on, Suze, you and I, you and I now. I, I know the first thing that you're going to say is that we cannot sing a concert lying on the floor. <laughs> well, no, you can't. Well, there's another step that goes in between, from the supine position to the other. Let's, on all fours, Suze. Here we go. Down here. There we go. There we go. Now, <clears throat> loosen your neck. Now, will you, will you take a good deep breath? Now, look and see what happens here. Now, do you feel that widen there? And that's the area, see, right under the ribs, right under the ribs. Do that once more. Now, will you exhale? Now, can you, do, as you exhale this time, could you push up against where my hands are? As you exhale, push up against where my hands are. That's a little better. Now, will you pant? Notice, now you can see that all over. Singing is a physical exercise. Here we go, Suze. Now, while Susan is getting up, will you lie down on the floor? Turn the tape off. Lie down on the floor and check yourself. You can check yourself just as easily and check and see if your tummy works the same way that that is. Now, remember this is a physical activity. It is not a passive activity. You've got to get up off of your tuchus and do something in order to really to be able to move that air properly. The next aspect of this whole business, of the commonness of our being air instruments, is the idea of the embouchure. Embouchure has to do with lip position. Most people do not think of it in the form of, say, a singer, but they readily accept it, the embouchure of a trumpet player, the embouchure of a clarinet player. Our basic embouchure is this. These muscles here are connected all the way down here. And if you will lightly draw a diagram from right here on your face as though you had a black pencil and it comes out right at the corners of your mouth and brings your lips forward. Will all of you singers do that, please? Here we go. Bring the ring right forward. Make sure your chin's down. Make sure your chin's down. Now, and, and leave those lips out. Now, let's listen to the embouchure of the clarinet. What do you do with, with the embouchure, Irene? Can you tell me? Clarinet embouchure, the chin is pulled down and pulled flat. The lips actually are pulled forward in a manner that's very similar to a, a singer's embouchure. And uh, there's also a lip, pr 
pressure that's pulled down, everything is all pulled in uh, to hold the mouthpiece firmly in the mouth. But there is a distinct embouchure which makes the playing of your instrument possible yes. throughout the scale. Yes. Okay. Would you, would you play a, a, a scale, any scale that you would choose? Now notice, notice when she's doing that, that this is pulled down here, and then, they, then the reed is resting lightly here on the chin, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and, and the lower lip. Do that again. Fine, all the way up and down. Did she change this in order to do that? No, not one bit. Now, would you play us a scale, please, Matthew? Sure. Now, before he plays, look, look at what he did with his lips. Do you see, do you see that? It, that? Tell me about that. How did you develop that? Well, you turn the corners of your mouth in and tighten, and uh, you flatten the chin, very similar to the clarinet, so it's like this, mm -hmm. and just curl. Okay. Then it holds, it holds all the way through the scale. Yes, sure. All right. It is very important here. Let me, give you, let me give you some pitches. Here we go. My singers, you take, that, you take that pitch. Will you, Suze? You take this pitch. You take this pitch. And, buddy, you take this pitch. Ready? And do this for me. And exactly the way they were now with an E vowel. And... May I hit the three ladies? Stretch the sun. Fine. Now, without changing your mouth, take your hands down. Without changing your mouth, do the same thing. Don't you let your, don't let your face go. There, you understand? You have to activate the face, and I need to make that point with you. Activating the face. Have in your mind always the idea that. There is no such thing as a non-projected impression or idea. There has to be, in conducting and in singing, a purposeful use of the face. I love Margaret Harshaw at Indiana University. I've learned a lot about choral music from that great voice teacher. She says, you don't say, relax the jaw. You say, jaw, do this. You don't say, tongue, get out of the way. You say, tongue, do this. I'm a firm believer in that. We, we use too many amorphous terms in this business. There, she, there should be much more concrete idea. So when I say activate the face, you have to purposefully move those muscles in a way that perhaps you've not been used to doing. Now, can you sing those again? E and. A little more suit. Bravo. Now sing an O and don't change anything. O. Now go from an E to an O in a blend. Sing E. Into O. Fine. They didn't have to change anything. Sing it the way people ordinarily do it, please. And. Now, do you hear the change of resonance as they go from what I call an east west vowel to a north south vowel? If we keep the idea of a north south vowel all the time, we're in much better shape because we can go from the E, which is one extreme, to the oo, which is the other extreme. Uh, sing for me. Will you sing the opening uh, phrase of Visi Darte, Lisa? Visi Darte. Tosca's great tune. All right, here we go. Visi Darte. Now, the only thing that she did, if you saw her on camera then, when she sang the E's, it was VC, but when she opened for the A, ah, she didn't change this way. She only gave more space this way for the R and then came right back to the T. So we have E, E, R, A, literally are the vowels. Mm -hmm. Do it without the consonants, will you? E, e, e. Only move the tongue a little bit as you go between those, be between those two vowels. Uh, Joan, what did you sing for uh, re-audition the other day? Uh, let the words open. Fine. Will you sing me the opening phrase of that? Let the bright seraphim be born again. Now, do you see the way that, that embouchure stays almost the same the entire time as she goes from one of those to the ending? Will you do that again all on an E vowel, Joan? E Sing it on an O vowel. O -O 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 
same, same embouchure, same embouchure. Do you feel confined in doing that? No, no it's very not free. at all. Very well, t tell me about it. How does it feel? It's very open. Mm -hmm. What is open? Uh, there's a lot of space. Where? The sound. Where? Uh, you see, we're getting, it, we're getting into terminologies now <laughs> that people always use. It has, it's open. It's roomy. Mm -hmm. What is it? You know, what is roomy? What is open? You know, did you, all right, go ahead. Back there. <laughs> back, back there, back there somewhere. The, the whole yeah. inner cavity is open. The whole mm -hmm. cavity the, of the mouth. Uh, what what open. cavity? Inside the Fine. mouth. Joan is referring to the holes in your head. You know, and everyone has holes in their head, and the singer that uh, uh, uses the acoustic realizes the hole in your head. I believe you did the opening of Largo al Factotum, did you not, at your thing? Would you sing that opening statement, please? Ready? Isn't that it? And. Largo Factotum de la Cita, Largo. Now, notice when he, when he does that, with, even with the shouting of the, the, the Largo business, the embouchure stays basically the same, and even with a rapid speech, it is possible. Would you try that again, buddy? Largo. Right, you understand? The, it stays all the same. So it works with her bright seraphim and handle. It works for Puccini Visi Darte. It works for Largo al Factorum. Now, let's talk about moving the air. How do we move the air? Now, recall Buddy on the table. We move the air by this part moving all of the time. How do we get our singers to try to move the air? Would you all stand, please? When we stand, we work against gravity. We do not stand with something strong behind our back, as when we are in the supine position on the floor. We have to make ourselves feel the strength of that. Now, would you do this for me? Here we go. Bring the chin down, chin down. So <clears throat> look at this skeleton here. <clears throat> when you go to the doctor's office and that little wing ding comes up and you want to try to stand as tall as possible, the little wing ding goes around to the, uh, the, uh, uh, the crown of the head, right? Mm -hmm. Now, do that. Put your hand on the crown of your head. Oh, come on. Now, the crown, not this part, the crown. That's what makes you stand six feet tall. There we go. Now. What happens to the back of your neck when you do that, buddy? It pulls it up, doesn't it? It lengthens it. Now, that's a good term. Sing so that you lengthen the back of the neck. Now, the other thing that I want you to be aware of is with, uh, with George over here. This is, this is my friend George. When we, when we do this, we open the jaw, and the jaw opens from the back, from right back here. That is the real thing. That's to get space so that we can move the air. Like so. I don't know whether you can catch me or not, but if I drop the jaw here, I become buck-toothed, a little double-chinned, and fat-necked. Those are all good things. That's, that's, your check, that's your checklist. Will you try that? Isn't that gruesome to, com to comprehend? Well, think of Beverly Sells. How many chins does she have? You know, I mean, and she sings beautifully. Do that. There we go. Now look at those, look at those loose jaws. Velcro your tongue to your lower teeth. There we go. Now, get all the air out of your body. All the air out, hands down. Now, hands on your tummy. Now do a lip trill. Come on, more like a horse, there we go. There we pull, pull in here again. Let it go as long as you can. Come on, pull way in, feel your belly button go back there. All right, Todd Duncan, another great voice teacher whom I admire, talks about compression. So in order to have a, a controlled air column, there must be a musculature controlling the pressure of that. Sort of like um, the spray mechanic thing that you put on the end of a hose. The water comes out the hose, but if you want to control that, you put one of these little spray gadgets that will let just a little bit of air out, I mean of water out, or you can open it full blast or take the whole bloody thing off. You know, that's the way the breath mechanism works. But you've got to have that pressure. The pressure is supplied by the musculature as well as the control by that. Now, would you put your hands on your tummy like here and do me, go and sing me My Country Tis of Thee and sing it with an, with a, with an oo vowel. Do not use a consonant, just an oo. And belly button, belly button. 
and tighten the groin muscle just below. Move the air. Move the air. Keep going as far as you can. We got to Pilgrim's Pride. Now, how far can you go? Now, the, the, the way to do it first is to lie down on the floor. You go through the whole thing that we did with Buddy over here, checking to see whether your belly button is really working with the breathing mechanism. Do a dry lip trill. Do one. Do that one. All for as low as you can at its high. Hands on your belly button. Way high and way low. Way high. The next thing is you try to sing your melodies. Sing your melodies with a lip trill and see what it does to the musculature. It's funny about it, but with a lip trill and with this kind of embouchure, these muscles can't help but work. And believe me, that's the most important thing. Now, try that once more, the lip trill on My Country Tis of the with the instruments. Now see how far you can go on burn breath. <laughs> All right, here we go. What's that? How much time do I have? Oh, I like it. All right. And. Oxygen tank. <laughs> All right. I hope you've learned just a little bit about this, uh, this business of the mystique of the diaphragm, the real embouchure for singing, and the control of the air, because it's going to have a tremendous effect upon you and your choir. And have guts enough to try it. Don't just look at this. Go out and try it, because it works with great singers. It works with children. It works with geriatric singers. But, uh, but you have to try it, and you have to do it first. You have to know what your voice is and what it's doing before you can get somebody else to do something with their voice. It just boils down to that. Thank you very, very much. The Triad Video Workshop was made possible by a grant from the Howard Hines Endowment, supporting nonprofit organizations in the fields of health, education, human services, community development, civic affairs, and the performing and visual arts.